Second. Can I assume, Tom? Uh, I never assume. <laughs> Although, your wife probably uh, <laughs> Great. Welcome, everyone. This is um, it's about 5:32. This is the uh, uh, Town Council's Finance Committee meeting for Wednesday, January 23rd. Um, just calling the meeting to order. Uh, just to note that all members of the committee are present, and we also have um, our staff are all present as well. And item number three is approval of the minutes from January 14th. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any corrections or modifications for Colette? Perfect. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Discussion items we have on our agenda tonight um, to talk about the equipment replacement reserve fund to include vehicles. Um, and I'll turn this over to Tom. Sure. Gina uh, has really the, been the architect of this. So, Gina, would you like to describe? Um, there should have been two sheets in your packet. Or no, just one, I guess, right? No. Just one. Two? Well, the last one. One for now. Just one. Yeah, there's one for vehicles, and there's the one for equipment from the last, last meeting. I don't know if it was put into the packet. I, I no. have mine. Right. If Sorry. If you, it has I've written on it, but if you want to review it, you get to review it. But I basically did the same thing that wow. I had done for the last meeting in, in regards to um, the depreciation and coming up with a yearly average for all the various vehicles for the various departments and if there was they're mostly pretty much even across the board but it, if the, there was a high fluctuation on the bottom I put notes to explain why you would see that sometimes it's because one year maybe a department sold a vehicle and then they didn't replace it until the next year so there's an overlap and sometimes they just e didn't even get another vehicle or they've traded it from a different department and so I mean it's pretty self-explanatory but if you need more of an explanation I'd be more than happy to elaborate. I had a question. Sure. So in the last schedule that we had the yearly average said 247,000 uh, was the yearly average and now in this one showing 814. Right because so. The first one was just equipment, which would be like oh, okay. thermal cameras so, okay. or generators, and right. um, and this Great. is just vehicles. Terrific, thank you. So combined, so combined is about a million. It's about okay. a million bucks a year. Great. Yeah. Ouch. <clears throat> so, so one other question I had is on the new one, the detailed mm -hmm. one. The the details really terrific. You know, so thanks for that. And it must be a, a you know a headbanger pulling it all together, <laughs> but. But it would still be good to have the value shown by each vehicle, if you could. I mean, so we kind of know what the tracking is. The other, the other, so you know, where possible, you know, at some point the cost for each vehicle. Would there I be? do have that. I yeah. do have. Uh, I can give you the detailed listing for every department. Yeah, it, I, I don't think you list. need to do another report, but just if you yeah. had a supporting detail that was in for some form would be helpful. Okay, so historic cost versus life to date accumulation and well, I think just for this one, especially where we're we're disposing of a vehicle, you know, what mm -hmm. was the the net amount that we mm -hmm. show there in terms of the disposal, and where does that show? Is that isn't that supposed to show us in a someplace in a revenue line? This is just showing you the depreciation. Right. So it's not, it doesn't, Right. I'm not reflecting any values. Right. But my question is where would we, if would we, we see that some other place like pop up as a? It's seen in the CIP request. Okay. okay. If there's yeah. a trade-in value, we expect the, the monies yeah. Yeah. that we're seeking approval for, right. appropriation for, includes um, any other proceeds, trade-in right. or other grants or, or resources. Remember, this exercise was designed to really size what would we need yeah. to invest okay. on an annual basis to fund these things going forward, okay. such that when they needed to be replaced, we had money to buy them. Fair enough. Right. And so roughly, we're talking about a million dollars a year. Right. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Not, not specifically on yeah. the schedule. I mean, this was a lot of work. Thank you for doing that. This mm -hmm. is good. I think it's really just a question for us as a committee and the chair about, Tom, when, when would you need to have any budget guidance if we were going to do anything with this or terms <laughs> You're of? You're ending in a million? Well, <laughs> what, what's well I mean, guidance means, I mean, our, our goal was what we wanted to get here in six years to have mm -hmm. it. 2024. Mm -hmm. So 
I guess I'm just asking if Tom needs guidance from us about what we'd like to see, at least in the first pass in this year's budget, if anything, I guess is a question for us. I don't know. Uh, no, absolutely. And I think we had a brief conversation. Maybe it was outside of the meeting. I'm trying to remember. But um, we talked about Tom presenting something in his budget. So mm -hmm. I agree with the guidance. Um, and that it would be called out into a separate grouping so that we, and it's not just this particular policy, it's all the other policies that we've also talked about, mm -hmm. like we did last year with capital equipment. Um, you know, the items that were no longer being, that were being funded in the budget rather than being um, done through debt. Um, so I don't have a problem giving some direction, you know, for me it's simple, take a million dollars, divide by six, and yeah. let's, at least from a planning perspective, include it. You do raise an interesting other point, another goal you've talked about in your fiscal policy is to, to actually switch over and fund these through the operating budget uh, in, in a greater way than we have mm -hmm. historically. Yeah. So to the extent we pull those out and start funding them um, in the operating budget, it would reduce the, the need of this, obviously. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's a separate funding source. I think it gets to the same uh, purpose. Uh, you know, I would need direction, and maybe you're prepared to give it tonight, but uh, you know, by certainly at your next meeting at the very latest. And it would be interesting to see how that compares with what your overall budget expectation is, because this will be brand new money um, and will be noticeable because of that. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is that I think Public Works has a vehicle replacement schedule, or they used to, so that sure. might give us an idea of what uh, vehicles are coming up to be replaced, you know, in the next five to six years. Well, we have a five-year capital plan that's in the budget. You can mm -hmm. see they don't almost bet on that. I mean, there's a couple of tweaks here and there, but they uh, they remain pretty consistent with moving forward and staying true to their equipment replacement schedule because they've actually um, proven time and time again to it's in our best interest to sell the vehicle before it starts to really cost us money and while it still has a little mm -hmm. trade-in value. And I think that you then have to also look at, um, I mean, I'm ready to tell uh, as far as direction. I would make a recommendation you simply take the one is it 1.05 million mm -hmm. um, and divide by six and let's see what the impact is for that, whatever that number is. It's less than, obviously less than 100, probably it's 150,000 maybe. Seven or something like that. Whatever that number is. But I think that we need to also recognize that this is a fund that needs to be built up and maybe what we do is we take the six years between now and 2024 yeah. or whatever number of years that is yeah. um, and build that up because you can't, why put it in there if you then and then the following year take it out? Because you have another building. Interestingly, how would it affect, uh, is it calculated in fund balance? It would be restricted. It would come out of fund balance, right? Isn't it? But would it be <coughs> reflected in fund balance? So I wonder if we're serving multiple purposes oh, by doing so this, also helping bolster our fund balance. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. It's restricted yeah. uh, for a very specialized purpose, but That's um, a good point. can you be, answer that? Um, right. What we would do is, uh, so if we budgeted, 176,000 each year for six years, then uh, we wouldn't necessarily spend it. So that money would right. close to fund balance, but we would essentially become like carried forward and restricted. So, but it would still be a positive fund balance impact, though, right? Correct. For, for because it purposes becomes of bond part of the overall. They really serve balance. another important so topic. And from our fund balance about. policy, there are goals that we set last year yeah. on how we redefined it should help us long term. So does this show now department by department? So if we're going to be consolidating this into one fund, will we lose the, you know, the, is there any sort of department or unit by unit reconciliation we do or not? Just I mean, other than the other than the detailed notes, the variance notes. No. It would be a, considered a revenue uh, in the year that the equipment. So you'd expense it. You'd show it as a purchase or appropriation in the given year that you're going to. Do it, uh, okay. and then this would be the revenue source as opposed to bonding or okay. other means. Okay. But, but I think Don's asking probably what we wouldn't have the D. So, so much was for fire. So much was for it would yes. just be an equipment yes. reserve overall. That then, yeah, the years that we were purchasing vehicles, we would have to go to that reserve. We'd still approve what vehicles we purchased okay. as, as a as a committee. Yeah. Right. So, I think Sean suggested just at least as a placeholder this year, go with 1-6, which I think is a good idea. And understanding that that's going to be accumulating forward if it's six years is when we got to get there at least. Yeah, I do recall, this is looking backward, so I, 
I haven't really studied to see what that is, but if we have a ladder truck, a million dollar purchase, that throws you all out of whack. So we yep. ought to do a little forward looking, yep. um, or, or at least the recognition that this is not likely to meet all of our future no, no, needs. No, but it's a start. I mean, I think and then that. also there's uh, charter requirements. Uh, bonding of certain size and certain type does require voter approval as mm -hmm. well. Um, a way around that is is not bonding, obviously. You don't need voter approval to spend, to raise money or uh, through appropriation or right. other means. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure in this process that we are retaining some discipline around really pressing to see, you know, to test needs, number one, and number two to, uh, I know we have some assumptions in there is this general, you know, uh, uh, knowledge or, uh, you, know, con you know, accepted, uh, principle that it's you know, cheaper to replace vehicles sooner rather than trying to fully depreciate every single one. But I still, you know, there, I still think that we have a tendency to, you know, instead of good, better, best, we're always picking best. And do we, you know, do we need to kind of, uh, is there an opportunity for us at some point to test some basic assumptions like that? So I just want to make sure that creating a fund like this will not remove us from the discipline and accountability from doing that. I assure you, we, we scrutinize this, so I, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with your characterization that we always go with best. We, we go with what we think is appropriate to do the job that's required. Um, and we do have detailed studies that we could share with you that uh, track the maintenance of the vehicles yeah. over time, over their life. Yeah. And not surprisingly, you'll see um, costs inc increase exponentially in the out years. And yeah. So there is a point, yeah. and we think... We've calibrated our equipment replacement schedule based and informed by that analysis yeah. as to what is the point where we should be trading these in before they start to cost us tens of thousands of dollars in some cases. Well, I, I would say, you know, I think some departments are better than others. You know, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, the, uh, the fire department, I think, does an outstanding job of being really, you know, really tight with the shekels on, you know, uh, evaluating their needs. I mean, for example, she's getting a new, you know, a Tahoe, it's 2017, it's not a new vehicle, you know, so... So those those kinds of things, I think, are, you know, uh, but there, I don't know that we have that, uh, like, you know, same discipline and accountability across the, all departments. So. I mean, I, you know, Don, in prior years, I mean, the the prior finance committee had been together, what, four years, Sean? Something like that, three much. years? Three. And, and every year when we do get the budget book, I mean, every year that's been an area where we've had some conversations yep. about, do we do it this year, do we push it yep. off, do we not do it? So every year we end up yep. having some of those conversations right. and making some Good. decisions or suggestions right. along the way. I think every year I can remember we've right. made some type of adjustments to, right. the, to the capital expenditure based on, those, you know, can you get by one yeah. more year with that yeah. plow truck or whatever it is. Yeah. I have to confess I wasn't really a religious watcher of all the finance <laughs> committee yeah, meetings in the past. But yeah, thank totally you. understand. <laughs> so as it relates to um, the actual, the, the issue around the fund balance, are the restricted fund balance approach to this? Um, I take it that there's a consensus that we go, we'll give Tom the direction to include this as part of the budget, and then also any additional. But and I think that generally that there is a feeling that anything that is a policy change that it be called out as part of the presentation, so that we because sometimes these get hidden; they're not very big in a ninety million dollar budget. Oh, I'll be sure to point this out very yeah. clearly. So, <laughs> so if we can make sure that we have that, because, you know, everyone needs to understand what $170,000 does to the no, budget. And your uh, tax colleagues rate. will be interested to know that it's right. a change in practice. Mm -hmm. But this is very good, very good reporting. Yeah, thank you. Um, the other thing is, yeah. I think if the council puts it in as, like, a, creates, like, a reserve, an actual reserve account, then we can kind of segregate it and we can put it in its own account. But it earn interest on it while it's sitting there yeah. for six years, because otherwise it just the interest just goes to the general fund. So that might be a thought for you to consider too. I think the key to that structural setup of the fund is to make sure that we counts positively toward fund balance calculation. If there's a way to do that, yeah. um, that just serves another purpose. It seems to me. Yeah. It's a twofer. Well, the question I have: Does it have to be a restricted fund balance? It doesn't have to be restricted. But it wouldn't be. It would be assigned. But it yeah, be assigned. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, what what no, I just, because I, I, no, because I got thinking maybe. But it's not just cash; it has a purpose. You're, right. You're, you're, it's like any of the other fund balances, including the beach. You know, correct. right? That's assigned but not restricted. Correct. And, and again, it's not inconsequential. As we look down the pathway, we have some pretty large capital expenditures coming. 
Mm -hmm. And I, I think you've said what matters to the bond agents is that we consistently are making progress against mm -hmm. some of our goals mm -hmm. and things that we set up. So to the extent that we can demonstrate, one, it's helping with fund balance, mm -hmm. two, it's helping with sort of a goal of equipment reserves, that should be a positive consideration. Yeah. Yeah. And it will buttress uh, maybe any negative that comes up. Again, yeah. moving up the ladder is exceedingly difficult. I think uh, yeah, our we just goal ought to, to be to yeah, we just don't want to go down. Maintain. Yep. yep. Good. So, um, on so, anything else regarding the, the equipment? Nope. We can move on. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for that. I have Great. the direction. Um, so, well, that's the only item under discussion. I do want to bring up a couple of things. First, I wanted to just on the agenda. Um, can you, because you shared Tom privately, or not privately, but in our email, can you um, give us an overview of the current status of the tax appeal and if uh, there's any yeah. financial implications? Yeah, I've, uh, I don't have it exactly, but I, I, my, yeah. my uh, observation still stands. Um, uh, the Superior Court uh, did issue a ruling late last week. Uh, Justice Horton, who heard this case in the first instance, is the one who heard it again. The good news is he showed great interest and willingness to dig into the detail, and it is extremely complicated and dry material. So we're thankful that the judge had the aptitude and the interest to actually dig into it, and he heard it again. Long story short, uh, we basically won on three of the four counts. Um, Justice Horton upheld the Board of Assessment Review's decision, which essentially awards uh, something in the order of 14.74%. Uh, it was uh, roughly a number that Horton himself thought was equitable and right. Uh, they came at it a different way and provided a different justification, but ended at that same point. Um, we also had the opportunity to raise uh, some arguments about how the how um, and when the interest is to be calculated. We chose uh, to calculate the interest starting uh, when the overpayment occurs, which would be at the time of the second payment due. Uh, Justice Horton disagreed with us, so we'll have to calculate interest and their due interest from the date of the first payment in each of those tax years. So there's a financial consequence. That's the piece we lost on. Where we won is that we don't need to award 7% interest, it's 3% interest. And that uh, that's a fairly big number, frankly. Um, and, th and that's predicated on the fact that the council um, amended its policy at the 3%, right? With your annual budget with order, annual budget you budget actually process. approve two different interest rates. One is uh, what we will, um, well, Ruth, you can explain it. One is 7% uh, typically, and the other is 3%. Uh, what we get charged or we charge. Okay. So you agreed with us. That's a big number. So between the money that we've already paid out to the plaintiffs, based on the original exposure, so Which we got 365000 or so, uh, the council funded additional monies in uh, by way of appropriation in the current fiscal year uh, to uh, just above 800000 in total. And I believe once... 800 additional to 360000 No, in no, total. With, with, a, with a 350. And that was based on an informed discussion around where we thought this was going to end up. And it's exactly kind of with a, a couple of nuanced differences uh, where Justice Horton has, has ruled. So I believe between what's been paid out and what's been appropriated, we have sufficient funds to cover this liability. Having said all that, we fully expect plaintiffs to appeal this to the law court. Uh, all indications are they've said as much. Um, that this matter will be settled once and for all with the main Supreme Court. So there, we're currently in the period that parties can appeal. They have not done so yet. They need to in the next two weeks, mm -hmm. but um, I fully expect they will. Uh, in the event they do, I expect we'll file a counter appeal and continue to argue that, uh, like we have right along, that a lesser percentage is the appropriate one, that our actual Board of Assessment Review um, erred in their decision which we have a right to do. So the good news is um, we get a ruling quicker than we thought we would, and we were successful. And our attorneys are advising that they think uh, the law court, and I sat through uh, the oral arguments, their eyes were glossed over. Uh, this is not something that they want to dig into. And I hope they have confidence and rely on a lower court decision, particularly someone who has taken the time to understand the case and has, uh, has, has uh, provided very thorough decisions um, each and every time. I hope that um, sways the law court and they end up affirming. So is there any value, as we did last time, is to pay 
this amount so we get out of the interest, accumulated interest charges. Interesting uh, thought. Yeah, we can stop the interest from accruing. Um, that would certainly be true. Let me find out what the likely uh, timeline is between assuming a, an appeal is filed uh, between now and when we're able to get this heard. Yeah, because it could be another could be months. a year. Uh, the law court months. takes a long time to respond, so mm. it could be a year out. So your point's well taken. That's why we did it the first time, is to stop mm. the so interest. Because then, mm -hmm. right. Plus so that, that may, might be worth... Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, look into that. I hadn't asked the question. Okay. Can you also, um, when you come back with that, can you also, um, as part of that, identify um, how much of the original funds that were dispersed has been actually cashed? Has everyone cashed mm. their check, that yes. given a check? They have. Mm -hmm. They have. Okay. Yeah, there's a period of time where I think their attorneys were holding them in escrow. Well, that's why I was. But I think ultimately they've all been cashed. We required them to sign a W-9, and we, w we asked the attorneys not to disperse those checks till we got those back because we needed to oh, for issue yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, uh, 1099s for, for those that were in excess. Yeah. At the time, we, we did it for a couple reasons. One, to stop the interest from accruing, but also to, de mm. to maybe demonstrate we are confident in our position. Apparently, there's no uh, penalty of you know, injuring their position by cashing them, uh, mm. and they did so. And when we do this calculation, it's going to be minus a 7% essentially. Yeah, the, calcu the recalculation will include, forward. and yeah. we'll, we'll do some catch up and clean up as part of that final didn't, payout. <coughs> didn't you say, though? Didn't some of the plaintiffs drop off the list after <coughs> that first payment? They didn't want to continue the... A couple of them. Oh. There's 51 that remain. <coughs> wow. So and that's a combination of... Uh, How many were originally? How many originally? Uh, in the 80s, but uh, through the course of all of this and the transpiring of, uh, you know, seven years, mm. folks have just fallen away. Property's wow. been sold and transferred. Mm. Um, so we're down to 51. Uh, and it's a combination of Higgins Beach properties, Trout's Next properties, and Pine Point properties. And thankfully, they're heard and have been since day one as a consolidated case as opposed to individuals. They're all based on the same merits. Um, so we're inching to the finish line. Well, and, and so outside of understanding, so it's, it's pretty uh, safe to say that there won't be any financial implication within this budget or any uh, budget consideration. I don't believe so, although if it goes to the law court, uh, there is a risk associated that they'll do something yet again different. Maybe but, within uh, the legal um, the expense? Pardon? And yet, if anything, uh, there'll probably be an impact within the legal expense line, like it has been. Well, I keep hearing time. this from lawyers. There's not. There's no more discovery to do, it's, and the briefs have been written four times now, yeah. so it's a matter of kind of arguments. cutting and pasting in arguments, so uh, dare I say it should be relatively modest legal expense, uh, given the work and the investment we've made to date, but there will be some, yes. Mm. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, I just, um, <laughs> it just, uh, it, it kind of, um, so for, the reason why I brought it up is outside of the budget implications is that I think it's a exa good example of how the council, the finance committee took the issue um, from a policy perspective and from a budgeting perspective and really plan for it properly um, if we only consider the fact that last year, which was because uh, the first payment was taken out of cash, last year was put into the budget, um, instead of, we would have actually had a negative uh, or a reduction in the tax rate if that had not been actually needed to be included. Correct. Um, right. So I think that we handled that extremely well, especially for a case that, um, which I've got to 80 80 something number of plaintiffs um, or defendants. Yep, or they're plaintiffs. plaintiffs. They're the plaintiffs. 81 or so plaintiffs that were overtaxed by $14,741 mm. get $800,000 in a settlement. It's just all on the taxpayer's back. They're asking for 2.6, just so you know, just to kind of bracket the. Well, they started at 4.2. No, most recently, they're at 2.6. So, thank you. Yes. And I'll respond back to you as to whether or not it would be advisable for us to, to make payments timely yep. so we could stop the interest. Um, the other item is um, to um, talk about the uh, agenda, uh, the budget adoption agenda. That's the other document that uh, staff has provided to us. And so uh, Tom has come back uh, with a, a recommendation which um, narrowed, I think there were five meetings 
um, down to three meetings, with the first meeting being the school department. Um, it's my understanding, although uh, Dr. Huchenberger just left, I believe that um, the school department is in agreement um, to mm -hmm. come first, which is, has been a goal of ours for quite mm -hmm. a few years. Um, so right now, Monday, April 8th, um, they'll be coming, and keep in mind that this is before the finance committee, the, but this committee here, not the council. Um, and then there'll be various departments um, on the 24th and then again, May 6th. Um, so I do appreciate you keeping it to a Monday, Wednesday schedule for me, mm -hmm. um, given the, the legislative. One thing if I could flag for you, it will be incumbent on the three of you to spend some quality time with your budget book um, following April 3rd so as to inform which departments you want to talk yep. to so yep. we can start plugging people yep. in. I'm going to have my senior staff reserve these dates and be prepared uh, and be flexible. But the sooner we can give them indications of, uh, or sooner, the sooner you can give us indication on which ones you want to spend some time with in one of these sessions, uh, we'll get those scheduled out. So um, as chair, if, 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 well, we can't really make a determination. And I think personally, I can tell you, I definitely want to hear, from, I would love to need to hear from fire and police, mm -hmm. fire, police, and, and EMS. Um, okay. I think yep, I agree. given its importance and significance, um, it's you know, kind of combined, it's one of the largest outside of schools. Um, from the only other department that I find I always have interest in is community services. Surprise, right, Tom? Say that. <laughs> um, and uh, I can give some guidance on where I'm looking at, um, particularly around fees. Um, I know that there was a study done last year, so I'd like to hear more around what's happened in that area, as well as enrollment and some other expenditures. Um, so with that, um, anything that you, outside of those, is there anything that either of the two of you would like to so I just want to say when I'm kind of looking at these schedules side by side, I know we made some consolidation, so, but I seem to recall the discussion was that we would consolidate a few of the budgets or, you know, some of them, we wouldn't review every single budget, mm -hmm. uh, every single department, so I think that makes sense. But I, but I am, uh, uh, you know, I'd like a little more discussion around how, you know, which ones we would pick. I know there was some talk about if they hit the number or they're within, you know, within a certain... Um, guideline that we probably wouldn't drill down uh, department by department. So I just want to try to get a feel for how many, you know, how many we would do in addition to uh, the ones you mentioned. So, so far, we've got three, school department, community services, and then police, fire, and EMS. Um, so um, from a historical perspective for myself, I, I, I'm okay with the manager and the finance director giving us a high level overview on those other combined areas because I, I do want to bring them up and see what the impacts are. So when you talk about um, technology, um, unless this is a major year for some type of technology change, um, I just see that as a, a pretty stable department as well as library and SEDCO. Hmm. I mean, library and SEDCO are really outside quasi, you know, outside agencies um, that get their funding from us. So unless there's something really, really significant, like you said, a high level overview that they're within we'll your be guidance. Prepared to do that, and uh, we'll yeah. be prepared to be reactive to your needs. So this yeah. is helpful. The, we'll we'll schedule in those three departments in addition to the yeah. school, and then we'll play it by ear as to who else you want to bring in. I'll just put them on notice to be ready. So if we schedule those three, then by my count, at least one, two, three, four, five, six, six other departments. So you know, if we're reviewing three and not reviewing six. Well, I think, I think what our suggestion was this year to try. Yeah. And each year, as, you know, as Tom said, we need to spend some quality time. <laughs> um, <laughs> running up to, running up to these. But, you know, sometimes, I mean, so, I mean, you'll probably get it. I mean, if you, I, mean, I think what Tom is suggesting a process for all of us, as you go through each one of those departments, you know, there's some years where they request another full-time. So there may be something that flags you saying, you know, it may be within guidelines, but you still have a concern. So I yeah. think that's what we're suggesting is yeah. let's see if we can say, geez, Great. we all agree that yeah. these budgets with a high level overview right. were okay, yeah. or maybe they're problematic. So I, yeah. I think without knowing what those numbers are going to show, yeah. the only question I have for the chair and this group, I do know, I think Sean and I have kind of traded some, I'm now the liaison to the library. Yep. Yeah. And I know in particular, the library is really excited about having an opportunity to yeah. come mm -hmm. present. Yeah. So we may not 
have an issue with the budget. But I just yeah. don't know how we want to deal yeah. with that with that type of scenario. We talked about that last time. There are some departments that could care less. It's not their they're not all that excited to talk to us, but there are some departments I might that suggest those are the ones you might want to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> maybe there's another way. I know exactly what you say about the library trustees. Maybe we could have a workshop and have a yeah, broader discussion to have budget implications of that. Um, but they've got, I know they've got some building plans that they'd love to start talking about. Yeah. So it's a broader conversation. I suspect. That's, a good, that's a good solution. Too. For example, just building on that, you know, there's a lot of activity with SEDCO, right, and the downs and development. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I don't have a frame of reference for that. And maybe it's something I can do offline, but that seems to me like it would be one that might be worthy. Again, I think we can, uh, you know, reasonable people may differ on what the choices are, but I just want to make sure we have a process built in, number one, and number two, we get a way for calling it mm -hmm. out. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's the chair's choice, but, you know, so for instance, I may be when we do get together on April 8th and we hear the school yeah. board, maybe that's a time we can compare notes about sure. which ones we want to see. Great. Yeah. And, and agree on some. If some we think are yeah. look good, then yeah. then I will now we're down to the ones we want to see. Okay. So um, what I would like to suggest is that if everyone, if the, between the two of three of us, if you can send me an email, yeah. on maybe. Sure. How you would like to see and what we could do with that. Um, yeah. In addition, and by the way, I, I'm not. I think public. Um, so let me back this up. Um, so because I sometimes forget that I've been around long enough that I'm very comfortable with the budget process because I've seen and heard. And this is going back to the time where we went line by line by line. Yeah. Um, however, there's been major initiatives over the years um, that I'd like to understand where they are, and that's where I'm for, like. So the police, fire, and EMS um, mm -hmm. underwent a. Um, you know, kind of an employee initiative as far as with training and hiring and mm -hmm. structuring. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to hear where they are in particular mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. Because um, a couple of years ago when things were even tighter, um, they had, for, um, they, I was going to say forego, they forgone um, that po that kind of that, pro that policy. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to hear where they are. And they'd right. like to get back on their staffing plan. Right. So, yeah. so um, yeah. and to understand where that is. And, yeah. and so there's, so I, I I yep. agree with you. It's just right. that, um, so as far as I'm concerned, the library in Setco, the reason why I give them, um, and I love the library, so I don't want to come across wrong, they're outside agencies that are, are run by their boards, yep. and their boards are the ones that approve their budgets yep. and manage line item by line item. So yep. unless there is a significant change in yep. organization or need. They're more independent in that process. That, yeah. Yeah. Might I suggest on that April 8th, we'll do the school department. That's okay. likely to take mm -hmm. Great. an hour or better, or maybe longer. And then let's also reserve time at that meeting for mm -hmm. and be prepared to kind of talk about your priorities. Okay. And then that will give me time to line up uh, in the yeah, next great. two meetings uh, who else we want to bring before you. And we will have had a chance to go through the whole, you know. You will have had it uh, starting on has. April 3rd. So yeah. you'll have a week to, well, not a week, five days. Week. Working week. And, it, and I think it's fair to say as well, um, Don, is that so you bring up some very good points about understanding how some of these other agencies, what they're focusing in on, and um, outside of the liaisons that we have that are good resources, every counselor has the responsibility or has the right to approach those. Great. Um, the outside agencies, I, I don't believe you need to go through the manager, but no. yep. internal departments, you, as a courtesy, because he is the manager, we go through him to kind of coordinate that. Great. So that employees aren't put into a sure. precarious situation, relationship with you know, council members. Sure. Um, so anyone is welcome to, to kind of do that. Okay. Um, any, anything that I need to bring up regarding this? So right now, just for the public, what we're looking at is that we will receive the budget uh, presentation from the town manager and the superintendent mm -hmm. on April 3rd. Um, first reading will be on April 10th, which was a policy practice mm -hmm. change from last year, and we're continuing it. Um, yeah, and there's an erroneous reference in that first line of April 3rd. It says first reading. You can cross that out. First reading yep. will, in fact, be on the 10th. Yep. Um, and that will be available online in, um, as of that date mm, for sure. the public as well. Mm, absolutely. Um, and then on the f and um, so I went over the first reading. On May 1st, it will be a town hall-style public hearing uh, between the two boards. May 8th is a joint budget workshop that we have. Keep in mind that we also have a February 11th joint um, finance committee, February 11th joint finance committee meeting with the school board. Mm -hmm. um, and then on May 15th will be the final reading 
and then the validation vote on the school's budget. Um, and by the way, the final reading, that's also enactment of the budget. So we will vote on the budget on May 15th. And then Tuesday, June 11th, will be the validation referendum vote. And there is, a, by the way, there, um, so just there is an additional um, joint workshop um, between our committee and the school boards, and I don't remember the date though. It was in, it was in March. I want to say it's right around the same date. It might even be March 11th. We'll, we'll clean this up and reissue yeah. this and the larger calendar. calendar. The larger yeah. calendar. Um, and if maybe from a communication standpoint, um, and I'll report this out. By the way, the word education is not spelled correctly, which is somewhat ironic. Um, in the fourth line bullet. Um, we, if we can post that soon, if we can post the schedule. Yeah, we have the budget um, portal as soon set as we're up. comfortable, I think that the earlier the better. Um, you know, on that portal, the budget portal, as well as making any, you know, social media announcements would be nice. Any questions regarding the budget adoption process? Could I just speak to the budget document itself? Yes. Um, staff has undertaken a, a kind of a forensic or introspective view of the budget document. Uh, we've really transformed the document, added a lot more detail to it. Uh, apparently some people think there's too much detail and kind of some a lot of unnecessary noise in this and uh, really led by Larissa, uh, she first started doing kind of this introspective look at those of us that are really involved in the creation of the document to kind of evaluate and autopsy. Uh, do we need this? Don't we need this? Mm -hmm. Uh, we also looked at GFOA and some of the best practices in terms of budget documents, what sorts of information is of value and should be included. And finally, Larissa convened two different focus groups. Um, these are folks that she uh, kind of hand-selected, uh, and I say that because of their uh, past interest and involvement and sometimes criticism, frankly. Uh, this was not intended to be a um, pat, us, pat us on the back. Uh, it was tell us what's wrong with it. And through all of that, uh, we've come up with a, a couple of uh, changes. And essentially, we'll be producing a, a fairly detailed, not unlike document, kind of the deep dive, we'll call it. But we're going to create two other versions as well. So depending on the appetite of the reader, there'll be a high-level overview. There'll be kind of a middle of the road. It's all the same information, just kind of building up. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, and what you'll find of interest is kind of the final document, uh, which is all the detail. But I was a bit surprised to hear that the reaction from those that have really spent the time to be part of this process in the past wanted it simpler. That um, there were some key things, and they gave us very good constructive comments. So, did, did that focus group or the focus group include employees and citizens, or it was all the citizens? The focus group. All groups. citizens. Okay. Uh, we did have an employee-based one yeah. as well. Um, so it's a combination of all those inputs that we've uh, are going to come up with a slightly sure. different format. So I think that's um, actually a very good, um, but I hope that we tread uh, um, slowly. The reason is um, when you have multiple doc multiple versions of the same information, people will then have different reference points when we have conversations or when we start deliberations around Fair the budget. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, from a committee perspective as well as from a council, we need to determine um, um, that we probably want to look at um, I think we need to look at all three so we know what's out there, but look at it from our deliberations from the highest level. It will. Yeah, when someone asks us for the budget, they'll be getting the full-blown okay. document, and that's what will be distributed to the full council, school board members. Uh, but these other documents will be available. It's the same information. It's just packaged uh, differently. Is there but, much more staff resources to do that? Um, is it three they tell me no, but I, I won't be the one necessarily doing it. Uh, I suspect <laughs> it will take some extra work. Larissa's really taken this project on, yeah. and I think we'll see it through. Right. So, so it's a work in progress. We're trying to be reactive. So the only, so the other, only other cautious point, and um, this is not by any means a criticism, but at the same time, the other piece that we need to be careful is that the information that trans, um, transcends through each of the documents, going from a high-level executive one to a very detailed, that there's consistency in the presentation of graphs and charts, because as soon as you, because you're going to have some people. They're going to look at all three of those, and they're going to focus in on only those things that, well, here it says one thing, and this one it says a different one, but yet it's recalculated because it's, you know, the detail's not as thick. Um, so I just want to make sure that there's we're... There's a danger there. I a mm -hmm. danger. fully appreciate that. Yeah. So, well, good. Thank you. Um, great. Great. Can't wait to see it.
Um, anything else on discussion points before talking about future meetings and discussion, future items? No, um, great. great. So our next meeting will be February 27th. Um, again, we do have the February 11th meeting. Um, I believe it's 5.30. I think I saw Sarah, uh, Ms. Layton from the school board sent around a, uh, an appointment, but it will be here in chambers. Yes. Um, also, so it's at five, February 11th, 5.30 is joint. Um, and there's a joint communications meeting at, I think, for that day, so okay. uh, there will be some continuity. Um, anything regarding meetings? Well, do I, I just want to go back a little bit on possible discussion items and looking at the, you know, at the agenda, and I know we covered a couple of them, but there were several on here we didn't touch on. Will we leave them for a next meeting? or? Um, yeah, so if you remember, um, I think we took whatever we felt were the top. I really wanted to keep it to three because otherwise you're going to get a laundry list. Right, right, right. could technically be as long as this page itself. So, um, you know, if you just send them to Tom and Tom can add them. It doesn't okay. matter to me how long the list is. Yeah, we tried to record all yeah. of your ideas of future items. So if, want, right. if we've missed something, tell us. Uh, when you take them up uh, right. will be your decision oh, okay. going forward. Because okay. I thought... Yeah, I thought we were going to take them up tonight, but these are just things we'll cover. Yeah, just so we don't lose the, lose the thought. Uh, okay. We can advance them when your yeah. time and interest uh, allows. Uh, during budget, you, you might have time to take one or two of these up before, but once you yeah. get immersed in budget, you'll probably be focused Great. on that. Great. Thank so you. So if there's nothing else on the agenda piece, um, or on the dates, I'm sorry, um, moving into those discussion items, I do want to suggest that if serving value of services um, is our number one priority, that we begin are asked to have to begin doing research on, you know, what are the methodologies or what, um, how can we do that? And what's there going to be, what are the potential costs associated? Because um, you're going to, you're going to probably want to hire an outside firm to do a survey. Because I, I actually had a chance to see one that was done for this uh, town of, uh, see the Freeport of, Freeport of Yarmouth, I can't remember where my friend lives. Um, and it was more about aging in place, but it was a really nice survey and it talked about the value of services mm -hmm. focused on. And so I think that since this is a, uh, our opportunity to survey is that we also look at other policy, not just budgetary issues and constraints, but look at um, ancillary issues that are associated with the budget or with the services. So looking at aging in place, we just became an age-friendly community through mm -hmm. AARP. What are some of the policy initiatives that we can kind of incorporate around that? Um, yeah. And it, it comes down to how questions are drafted. Um, sometimes it's also, and what, what are those questions? I've done a little bit of surveying. I know that there's a gentleman um, that is on the library board, uh, Mr. Koopel, uh, Koop, yeah. um, who is um, who does that. Sendo Consultant. What's his name? Um, Jim Koopel. K U P E L. Um, and he's yeah, Crescendo Consulting, I think. Yes. Yeah. And so he does um, surveying. He just actually completed one for the library. Um, oh yes. So during my last um, when I was liaison, that was actually very very informative, and this might Great. be something he could yeah. help with. Yeah, I intend to put uh, request money in the budget. I do think we'll need some outside professional assistance to form the questions uh, and to tabulate the results so it's usable for us. Yeah. And if possible, I'd love to find a way, if they can tease it out, so whatever service we identify, I don't know if there's a way to, like, the Goldilocks question, you know, would you pay more for these services? Do we spend too much? Do we spend too little? I don't know if there's any, because what we're trying to get at is if we had to prioritize changes in service levels, where would we go that would create, where do we need to increase, and where could we, if it's all possible? Yeah, yeah. I, I expect we'll involve this committee and maybe the full council right. in the preparation of those questions, the territory you want to cover. Great. Great. I agree with all those points, and, and just want to, you know, make sure that when we're, we're serving for value that we also get at the cost, efficiency, effectiveness mm -hmm. aspects of it. So if we're going to go through the exercise, we'll, you know, there ought to be a way for us to yeah, an indicator of that as well. Thanks. Sure. Um, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say the only other thing for future meetings would be, I, I think there's the audit thing we have to That's audit. Right. Finance, and, and I don't think we've seen audit meeting. Meeting. What's that? There's an audit. There's an audit, audit meeting. meeting. But I think we as a, as a town, as a finance committee, has some accountability don't we, to do something with? I don't believe so. I think we've had typically had a joint meeting with the Board of Education okay. and the auditors presented it jointly. Um, the only thing we've done in the past is um, approve or recommend um, audit services, but I don't think the contract's up this year. Yeah. I think it's a three-year contract. So we can add that. That's true. That will be sometime 
February. Before budget. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the only other pieces, I know we've seen year-end financial statements, but I don't think we've seen a recent one for this calendar year. So seeing that it's half over, it would be. So, so for a, a regular discussion item out of four, yeah, for next time, can we put um, financial, financial statements December. analysis? Yeah. Um, wait a second. Audit meeting, the recent, oh, oh, financial statements, sorry. I'm going to take notes. Um, the only thing, Tom, I wanted to mention, um, on the pension funding piece, um, can you start pulling together some research maybe around this issue so that we can, I can at least get familiar with, um, you know, what is the, what is the legal or the CPA change that's going on and then what are, you know, you know, how important really is this? Well, we know, I think this, education this audit uh, will actually, we're, we're now forced to provide reporting on that. Yeah. Is, it, uh, is it a footnote or actually on the balance sheet? It's a separate statement, isn't it? Um, it's, I, I think it's still at this stage, uh, it's on the entity-wide statements, the first two statements that you see, there'll yeah. be something in there. I mean, as a liability, it shows up? I mean, yeah. actually in the financial. I, actually, there's both. There's a deferred outflow and a deferred inflow that's been added. And didn't, and I'd be curious, didn't, didn't Mick Page recommend that we start? Well, he we flagged it. He said, we're now reporting it, so he's anticipating that uh, we'll have to start funding it. Uh, that's not a requirement yet. Uh, there's a GASB ruling that we can provide you that provides uh, some guidance in that regard. So given the potential of impacting the, this year's budget, if we can include that as a, um, something that we could start talking about on the 27th. Okay. If we need to. Because then the, the, the secondary is whether or not we need any particular policy around that. I think that from this year, if we're mandated, from a budgetary perspective, we'll do what's mandated, of course. But if I, you know whether or not we need to have a future policy statement around pension funding. Right, and I believe Councillor Hayes is the one that brought that up in yeah. the in the context of when opportunities present themselves. This might be one of the ones that we want to start funding. Okay. Uh, I would also ask you to communicate uh, with uh, with Chair. Uh, Councilor Donovan, who is the chairman of the Rules and Policies Committee, they are also uh, have expressed interest in the TIF uh, or, or credit enhancement policy. Uh, I think there may be enough, there may be opportunity for both you, both of you to have some level of involvement. So I just want to make sure we're not duplicating effort here. Uh, we may have a philosophical debate between the two committees, you know, on the issue of uh, principles-based versus detailed guidelines. At least as I understand it so far so I, I yeah I suppose we do need <laughs> yeah I'll so reach out to Councilor Donovan and see where they are and yeah. then um, I'll the good get, news is there seems I'll to be universal to interest in advancing something so uh, it's just a good matter of how start. we get started and there's some great examples around of other towns that have done something yeah. like this right. the detailed ones in soccer and that's what we started to do is to collect those so uh, that that will be a value to whomever takes this on hey I'm just happy the rules and policy committee met they didn't meet at all last year <laughs> This so one, they want to take it up, they can take it up. Um, I mean, on that sorry. one, one suggestion was too that, that I think I think it's good that both are sort of involved. Maybe you know it should it should go through finance at some point would be my opinion because yes, it's, it's a final gate. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll let you. Uh, well. Watch us argue. Well, you're, you're, are there strong opinions? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I'm just. Uh, I'm aware of the how full your plate is, or it's going to be. And to Mr. Babine's point, uh, rules and policies typically has some time on their agenda, so it may be in your best interest to let them do some initial um, legwork on it. I'm sure they would be pleased to report, uh, you know, a progress report to you before they. Go too far. Great. With that, um, any public comment? Not seeing any, we'll close that. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? That's your name. 622. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Go out into the rain, right? Was it raining you guys? I know. It wasn't. I didn't think.